Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today I'm gonna to tell you about eight things you need to know before buying a electric unicycle. So, Let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. By the way, sorry if in this week the uploads were not so frequent, but I just moved into a new place and um, therefore I didn't have like so much time to focus on the videos to try out things and so on. But I'll be back on schedule really soon and I'm fully energized to give you more interesting content about PVs and definitely scooter content is coming as well of course you see and e-bikes but in this video I wanted to talk about the eight things you might want to know before you buy a electric unicycle and I know that the sort of entering threshold into the EUC world is a lot higher than for example on a skateboard and on a electric scooter because well you have one wheel and you know you can't just go onto a EUC and you know j just ride out on it like I'm riding currently okay okay I wanted to show off but now I have my feet wet well anyhow <laughs> so maybe the first most important question is like is it even legal in your country so EUCs are really a new kind of device they're not like scooters not like e-bikes because they don't have any uh, you know physical brakes like mechanical brakes and they have just one wheel so everything is just done via the self-balancing system and you know the battery the motor combination and software that will keep you upright on the EUC so therefore it's kind of hard for you know politicians to get up and uh, figure out some rules for EUCs but um, you need to just find out in your forums in your local forums if you live in Italy Ital Italian mono wheels or by the way, very good form. And electricunicycle.org is sort of like a global one where you can, where you can find out about um, various information, uh, legal stuff across the world. So feel free to read there, to ask questions, and then you can find out if the EUC is even legal. And then the next part is, how is it in practice? Because in Poland, Theoretically, I am a pedestrian uh, riding when I'm treated as a pedestrian when I'm riding on EUC. So I know that on a sidewalk or if I cross the street on a sidewalk, I'm safe basically, legally. Uh, but uh, on the street, I'm theoretically not allowed to be there. But in practice, nobody cares. I mean, car drivers are more annoying than the police, definitely. I mean, some car, car drivers, not all of them. So find out about that. Uh, check the fines, check uh, what would happen if you were caught riding EUC, check maybe there are special places where you can ride EUC, like for example in Berlin, you can ride in Tempelhofer Feld. Second question is, how hard is it to learn? And I will also make videos in the future, uh, maybe a, a video on how to you know, learn how to ride on an electric unicycle. I'll for sure ask my friend Jack to help me out on this one, because for me it was I mean, it was one and a half years ago, but I'm not really like good at telling uh, well, like what you, what you do. Jack is really good at that, so uh, we'll do that together. But in most cases, one to two hours, and you have the basic, you know, instincts figure it, figured out uh, how to ride, you know, just straight, maybe how to turn. But for some, it's just an hour. So all in all, if you have ridden on a bike before, on a scooter, I think you're just safe to go. I mean, definitely you can figure out how to ride on the EUC. It will take you perhaps uh, 100, 200 kilometers to feel you know, safe on a bicycle path, maybe 1,000 or 2,000 to get out on the road. It depends on the rider, but I am sure that you can figure out how to ride the EUC. You can get a cheaper one first uh, if you are like not sure about it, but you'll buy a more expensive one anyways later. And then when you decide to pull the trigger to buy your first EUC, 
then uh, you need to start training. And the question is, what sort of protection do I need for that? And most importantly, you need a helmet, like a full face helmet. I wouldn't recommend getting a open face helmet because I've seen too many pictures with people who had an accident with a you know, open face helmet. Just get a full face helmet, full face downhill bicycle helmet because these are also lighter than motorcycle helmets. The thing with motorcycle helmets is that they have a smaller visibility, they have less airflow, they are not really designed for slower speeds, which you will have at the beginning of your journey. So. A thing like this, the O'Neill uh, backflip muerta is something I'd recommend, say like a Bell Super 3R. MIPS like shock protection would be also really nice to have in such a uh, helmet. But anyhow, full face downhill bicycle helmet is what you need. Then the most important thing after that are wrist guards. I don't care about gloves, you can put them underneath your wrist guards, but this is crucial. This is really, really important to ride with wrist guards because if you are to fall and you slide on asphalt, this will prevent any you know, skin damage and most importantly, you won't break your wrist or hand with a uh, wrist guard. So get one of those. You can get one of the cheapest ones on, in Decathlon that are like for, I don't know, $6, $5. If you want something more expensive, get some you know, K2 like I have these ones or flex meter like these huge ones that Marty has as well. But wrist guards, really, really, really important. Then I would also recommend getting some shoes that are have just a bit more protection, like on the upper layer, uh, that are not so soft, not running shoes, but shoes like these. I, I ride in barefoot shoes now, but you know that's something you would get like after maybe 500 kilometers or so. You can also get some knee protectors and shin protectors because the pedals might hit you, especially when you are at the beginning of your journey. And then you can also get a motorcycle jacket. Good thing about motorcycle jackets is that they have um, this sort of 3DF, 3DO foam protectors here that you don't really feel um, because they're quite soft, but upon a crash they will get hard. And yes, that's what she said. This jacket is a Shima motorcycle jacket. It has knee protection, shoulder protection, as a back protector, but when I'm wearing a backpack I don't put it in and uh, mostly I do ride with a Bobble Bee backpack which has a uh, back, prote back protector inside of it. It's really just really easy to put on and it uh, also prevents any uh, skin damage if you were to fall because this is like a scratch proof material and yeah save me a couple times. Definitely would recommend that because it's comfortable and just does the job well. If it's designed for motorcycles, then it's definitely designed for the speeds that are achievable on EUC. The third thing you might want to know before you buy a EUC is, is it dangerous? And the thing is, I think EUCs are actually really safe. They have a huge wheel, like even the smallest EUCs have bigger wheels than scooters. So uh, when you go into a bigger you know, pothole or something and you bend your knees, then you're safe to go. If you were to fall, the EUC just, you know, go somewhere like this, oh, boom, and yeah, you just drop off. So that's pretty cool. And, and when you learn, you can always just, you know, put the EUC on the side or it will fall on the side. And things you need to watch out for, though, when you learn are curbs. If you go like, for example, in this thing here, you can't take um, like curbs sideways because this will throw you off. Need to watch out for potholes, obviously. Need to watch out for roots, especially if you don't have a suspension in your unicycle, like roots, roots below the asphalt. Yeah, and if it's uh, like really slippery, like on mud or something, oh, look at that. Uh, then you need to watch out for that as well. But all in all, I think EUCs are super safe. I think they're safer than electric skateboards because you have more points of contact on EUC, you know, you have your legs, obviously, your feet, but you also have your shins grabbing onto it and you're just steering it with your brain. So, you know, it's really hard to overpower it, to, you know, just fall on your face or on your back because they have just lots of power. If they do not have enough power, they will either tilt you back or um, uh, make emergency sounds so you know you have to, you know, just um, slow down a little. But be sure not to accelerate at 65 kilometers an hour with 30% of battery. Are they robust? And I gotta tell you that amongst PVs, I think that 
the electric unicycle is the most robust form of transportation because most of the time they have a, a very robust <laughs> shell and they're mostly really well weather sealed i'll tell you about some exceptions later and you can ride them in the winter in snow in rain and basically i think with an euc it's the safest way to go also if you fall they don't tend to break like right away you you will have to really work on that to to break them i had a galway nicola for six thousand kilometers it it took such a hard beating but it never failed on me actually same thing with the galway mss i had it had a crash at 65 kilometers an hour it was my fault and you know it, it still rides and it had like four and a half thousand kilometers on the clock so i think eocs are very robust you can ride them in any weather and i think they're also the best weather sealed pevs and uh, small exceptions king song 16x you need to cover the rear speaker to make it waterproof and you know dust ingress is possible in this wheel actually in all king songs and Galway msx you need to get a front bumper <laughs> because if you don't get it then well with the first fall probably the shell will break Galway nicola super safe wheel but all in all wheels really robust and this is also a reason why my personal vehicle of choice is a electric unicycle next question you might want to ask uh, and want to know is the sixth one actually on this list why should i even consider one and i actually made a video on six reasons why to buy a euc and you can check it out here um, so you know you have more reasons or a more you know deep dive video why to get one but most of all it's portability performance practicality robustness cool factor definitely the feeling of riding you know hands-free and just balancing with your body turning radius as you can see now uh, i think that the off-road capabilities are the best amongst small electric vehicles comfort i mean the list just goes on and on and maybe tied to this is question number seven or thing you want to know number seven is it like which one is actually the best for me and i'd say that actually every electric unicycle is really good and it's better than a electric scooter like unless you want to go like 70 80 kilometers an hour constantly but actually the veteran then is also really good oh hi dog hi doggo hello hi doggy you're my favorite customer maybe the only tip i'd give to you is if you're a heavier rider or a taller rider just start with something more powerful because if you get like a emotion v8 or a gotway m103 you might uh, um, notice a lack of power or lack of range really quickly once you get used to the unicycle and then i would probably start out with something bigger right away to avoid any lack of power or lack of range and the last thing you might want to know the eighth thing is should i buy new or used and the good thing about uscs is that they're really maintenance free and basically they don't have many faults even like after a thousand two thousand three thousand even five or eight thousand eight thousand kilometers so if you get a scooter after a thousand kilometers well they might be there might be a lot of things to do with it so for example the brakes might be used they might squeak the stem might you know just have some kind of noises the suspension might be at some point pretty you know squeaky or not work really well but an euc after 2000 kilometers is like basically like brand new only thing you need to consider is that older EUCs, like for example the m super v3 or you know gotway the mcm4 i think older unicycles tended to have just a bit more fragile axles or uh, you know the things you're standing on so i wouldn't go for i wouldn't buy a unicycle that's like three years old but i think two or one year old and basically like new after the first owner uh, are totally a safe way to go so ginger on wheels for example great channel as well he bought a emotion v8 as his first unicycle and that escalated quickly <laughs> into more speed focused unicycles but you know it is this was the catalyst to i think at least this was a catalyst to try out the um, more powerful unicycles so in the end uh, i think electric unicycles are extremely nice 
extremely good vehicles for transportation. Whoa. You know, I can even hold my camera now, talk and ride on the edge of these boulders. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I highly recommend getting a UC and I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.